and welcome to Dating Help 911, the only interactive dating advice television show in the world. The only one that matters anyway. <laughs> and my guest, That's the truth. <laughs> my guest tonight is the beautiful Natalie Bensavenga. Thank you so much. Natalie is the creator of TwoDayMag.com, and we're going to be talking about how to ensure that you get that second date with the hottie. Welcome, Natalie. Oh, thank you so much for having me on the show. Oh, As yeah. always, I love being with you. This is actually Natalie's third time. Three is a charm. It Natalie is a charm. Is the first and only guest to <laughs> For us to be that lucky to have her, so Stop. thank you, Natalie, very much. So before we, give, I love being on your show. Before we give everyone amazing advice yes. on how to ensure that they get a second date with that hottie, yes. what is Two Day Mag? So Two Day Mag, I would call it the modern guide to living and loving in the 21st century. We have lots of stuff on healthy living and healthy relationships. It's all inclusive, gay, straight, doesn't matter your age, what you look like. You can find an article something that you'll connect with at Today Mag for sure. Todaymag.com. It's it's really an amazing website. And you've written for us. I have, I have, I have. Tons of great tips from Tracy. <laughs> it's true. I, I have been fortunate to have written some articles for Todaymag.com and um, pretty much if you have a question, it's probably the answer is probably on Todaymag.com. I hope so. <laughs> All right, so Natalie, um, what is one of your favorite tips yes. for how to ensure that person right there watching, yes, mm -hmm. you, gets a second date with a hottie? So you're on that first date and you think things are going pretty well, right? But you don't want to make the first date like an interview. You're not on a job interview, people, okay? Could we stop with the bullet list of questions, totally right? I agree with that. I mean, let's have some conversation. Let's keep it light. Let's keep it enjoyable. Get to know the other person. Let them talk about themselves, tell you what they really like, and then bounce that back. You, you don't want it to feel like, I need a blood sample, <laughs> and I need a bank statement. You know, like, that's not what we're going for here. I totally, totally agree. You know, so many people, you know, when I host these flirting parties where I mm -hmm. take women out to meet men in bars, and um, I see them, they are, like, going through a checklist, like, where do you live, what do you do, yes. how old are you, you know, and it's so I mean, do you want to be on a date like that? I don't want to be on a date no, like that. No, they're not getting a first date, let alone a second. Exactly. So to really secure that second date, you really need to make that other person feel at ease. And making them feel as though they are either in some sort of authoritative position is scary, right? So let's keep it light, let's keep it fun, and let's keep the conversation moving forward. I totally, mm -hmm. completely agree with those tips. <laughs> um, also, um, my favorite tip to share is that giving direct eye contact creates chemistry. So yes. by that I mean that, you know, all those people that say, well, there was no chemistry or there wasn't chemistry, there was chemistry, there wasn't chemistry, mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm saying, but but I do know about chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> and what I know is the way to have chemistry with that hottie mm -hmm. is to give them direct eye contact while thinking positive thoughts. But what I forgot to mention is probably the most important part, and that is that we want to hear from you. What are your favorite tips for ensuring that you get a second date or if you're wanting a second date and not sure how to get a second date, call us. We're here. We're live. here to help. We're here We're to very help. friendly. This is Dating Help 911. <laughs> if you have a problem, we have a solution. So call us. 212-245-7273. 212-245-7273. And I think the, on the, air. the idea about chemistry is really, really interesting because I think a lot of times when you're on that first date, you're really insecure, right? You're not feeling maybe you're most confident. And especially as a woman, you really pick up on that lack of confidence, right? So if you're, a, for all the guys out there, even if you're guys, not feeling up. it, pretend to be confident. You know, mm. put that good foot forward because women respond to power just the way men respond to an attractive, well put together woman. Men are visual. We respond more to the energy. I totally agree. I think that. I keep saying totally. I have to stop that. I, I think <laughs> it's I'm, a road trip I'm to California. <laughs> <laughs> She's picking up the West Coast vibe. It's fine. We still love her. We still love her. Oh. <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, confidence. I think confidence is the most attractive mm -hmm. trait that anyone can have. Absolutely. So I think it's really important to get yourself into a place of confidence, which brings us to the next topic, if you're ready to go there, which I'm ready. is wearing clothes that make you feel confident. Natalie, yes. what are your thoughts on that? Okay, so one of my writers for the magazine, her, her name is Kimmy Kern, and she wrote about her experiences on a lot of first dates, and one of them involved, she, you know, she dolled up, she got all dressed up, she was ready to go out, 
the guy shows up, they're at like a nice sushi restaurant, you know, he shows up wearing ripped jeans and like a ratty flannel shirt. <laughs> yeah, and she was like, this wasn't like, you know, your fantasy carpenter, you know, this wasn't that kind of <laughs> flannel. Mm -mm. With the muscles. No, the please. The t-shirt was ripped because We, could, were we could only yeah. help, right? No. This was just like, I must have rolled out of bed and this was the closest thing I grabbed. So I think what we were, we were talking about this actually um, at dinner earlier is that, you know, men don't realize how much women really look at what they're wearing. It's the same thing with confidence. An extension of your confidence is how you look. Are you put together? You don't have to be a GQ model, but you need to look presentable. And like how you dress is how you feel. Mm -hmm. If you respect yourself, you're going to show that, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. people respond to the energy you put out there. Definitely. I think with a lot of men, a lot of men don't really care what a woman wears. They care what her body looks like. They care what her face mm -hmm. looks like, but they don't really care about clothes. So I think because of that, a lot of men don't necessarily care about what they're wearing because they don't even think exactly. that a woman is going to care. It doesn't maybe wearing, register. But we do. Oh, it does. And it, it, and it matters. And especially, too, speaking on the flip side with women, you know, if you're going to show off maybe your cleavage, then maybe wear like a pencil skirt or a pair of jeans or something. You want to show maybe one part of your body that you feel really comfortable with. We don't want to be dressing as though the rent was due yesterday, right? <laughs> it's not that type of first date. At least we're hoping right. not, right? Right. We're trying I to think, secure a second date. Yeah. I think depending <laughs> on how old you are, I think it's good mm -hmm. to be like 70 or 80% sexy. Like I agree. 70 or 80% covered. You know, and yeah. maybe like a little bit of skin. Yeah. It's okay. I mean, that's going to definitely impress my grandma when she watches this. Right. She's going to be like, 78%, I can live with that. Yeah. <laughs> but we want to hear from you. 212-245-7273. I'm starting to think that maybe we're not loved. I think we're Happy loved. I, I think we're just putting so much out there, they're trying to digest it all. They don't even know what to say to us. <laughs> we have so much goodness to give. That's what it is. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> or maybe they just don't want to interrupt our, our brilliant wisdom. Maybe. I don't that know. That is very true. <laughs> um, so also, though, to go back to yes. what to talk about. I know you mentioned earlier about it's good to have a light conversation mm -hmm. and not good to have the biographical discussion. But yes. tell me some more about what are your thoughts on what are good topics to talk about on a first date to ensure you get a second date. Well, I think what's even better than what to talk about is maybe what not to talk about. So maybe, fellas, you know, you don't want to bring out the X-File, right? This doesn't, we don't want to hear the sob story about why the last girl broke your heart and vice versa. Ladies, you may not want to bring up, oh, you know, I was walking by this Tiffany's yesterday and I saw this ring that I, I just love. You know, you, you <laughs> maybe not want to scare off your prospects before you get the chance to, you know, meet their mother. You yeah, know? yeah. So I think it's really important when you're discussing topics that you find common ground. So that's why it's so good to listen to the other person as they're speaking, be an active listener. Maybe listen twice as much as you're speaking. That way you can kind of get their interest. So let's say they discuss, you know, they're really into fantasy or science fiction. Well, you bring up maybe a movie you had seen or that you had wanted to see that's in that vein. You start a connection that way. You can talk about books, about, you know, movies, um, places you enjoy eating, types of food, what your lifestyle choices are. Do you like to do outdoor sports, indoor things, what kind of person you are. But all the fun stuff, the easy stuff, not the difficult stuff. Right. Let's save that for after. <laughs> I absolutely, absolutely agree. I think on a first date, the best thing to talk about is what you like to do in your free time. Movies, music, right. where you, sports you enjoy. Well, I always, I always quote you. I quote you all the time oh. anyway to my friends. But one of the things I always say is, Tracy Steinberg says, keep it light and breezy. Light and and breezy. I love that because it's the truth. You know, you're, you're dating. It's not, it's not a job interview. You're not being interrogated by the police, we hope. Exactly. That could be a very first, interesting first date. I'm not sure. Right. But, you know, kind of that's, a, that's a different kind of first date. But the important thing is, and I think that's really true, to make it fun, enjoyable, relax the other person you're with, share a laugh, you know? That's why maybe a drink or two can help. You don't want to get drunk, but a drink or two can help relax the situation. Right. And I also think it's great to, like you were saying earlier, about listening to the other person. Yes. And to pay attention to when their face lights up, like what, it, what really excites them. But I think we have our first caller. Hi, caller. You're on the air. How can we help you? Hi, I have a question. Where do you guys stand on going to the movies for your first date. Some people say you shouldn't go because you're just staring at a screen and not at each other for two hours, but some people say, hey, it gives you something to talk about maybe afterwards. I was curious where you two stood. That's a great question. That Thank is a great so question. So the question was, 
what are our thoughts on going to a movie for our first date? Natalie, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I'm against that because there's nothing, you don't know the other person well enough, right? So you normally when you're on a movie day, you want to hold hands, you're cuddling, maybe you're not even watching the movie, who knows? But point <laughs> hopefully. being, hopefully, point being the first date is about getting to know the other person. You cannot do that. Like he said, if you're both staring at a screen, sure, you can talk about the conversation, you know, afterwards about the film, but why not instead go somewhere like, you know, go to happy hour, have a drink, have an appetizer that's a affordable, easy way to hang out with another person in kind of a more sexy environment and talk about your favorite movies. Mm. You know, you can you can use movies as a jumping off point and then maybe that could be a way, oh, you like this this actor, I like this actor, let's go see that movie and it's next your, your week. Second date. And there it is, <laughs> there's the connection. <laughs> All right, I think that's great, great advice. And you brought up some great ideas about where to go on a date. Yes. So other than happy hour, any other ideas? Well, I think with this economy, you want to be more creative, right? Not everybody can afford to take someone out to a five-star restaurant and really impress them. And I think, you know, too, you don't want to put maybe that foot forward on your very first day. You want the other person it's to really... It's too much pressure. It's too much pressure, and you want the other person to get to know you maybe more for who you are and not necessarily like, hey, I can flash around my money, like... Mm, that's that's not genuine, right? So there are a lot of great things you can do that are pretty inexpensive. You can go to an outdoor concert, do a gallery crawl. There's lots of great art galleries, you know, things like that. You could do a, um, a local theater production. You could go see a dance production. Oh my goodness, there are a million different activities that you could do. What about you? What's one of your favorite creative dates? Creative dates. I love a picnic in the park on a beautiful day. You are such a romantic. <laughs> I think we should go on a date because that sounds fantastic. <laughs> I think we should. I think that is so We wouldn't run out of anything to talk about, never, that's for sure. Never. Um, I think that's so nice, and I think that's a way mm -hmm. to, you know, I think that women really want, I get this a lot from men, which mm -hmm. is that, you know, going out to dinner and drinks is $200 a night, oh and my that's gosh, for yeah. a first date, and you don't even know if you're going to see the person again. Mm -hmm. So I get it that men don't want to be doing that all the time. But what I love about a picnic or some of the other ideas mm -hmm. that you brought up is I think that women want to feel special. So women want yes. to feel that you're, you've invested time and energy. So if you've taken the time to prepare a picnic and maybe find out like her favorite fruit for dessert or whatever it is, it makes it a little more personal and uh I think and that's it, it actually feel special. That's the most important key is what you brought up is making it personal. Making the other person feel as though they are the only one in your universe even if it's only for that night, right? Yes. Cuz we don't know this is the first day. We're trying to move towards the second date, but in order to secure that first impression that's great, especially with women, you have to feel as though oh this guy thinks I'm special. Right. And for and for women, you know, let the guy take that lead. Let him plan. Let him treat you to an evening like that. It it doesn't mean that you don't deserve all of the uh, modern <laughs> amenities that men deserve. It's, feminism can still exist along with chivalry. Right. I'm a firm believer in that. I'm a huge <laughs> firm believer in also. I always say that women should treat men like kings and women mm -hmm. and men should treat women like queens. And yes. um, I think it's very important to treat them like they are the most important person in the world. Absolutely. While you're with them. And I think going back to, to what them, we were talking about. Keep yourself totally focused on that With person. the whole concept of confidence and expressing that in the way you dress and the way you carry yourself and how you treat other people around you. People pick up on that. You know, I was I was reading something earlier that was talking about um, <laughs> I, <laughs> sort of a funny story. <laughs> well, Tracy actually had a great article on menshealth.com and yeah. they yeah. were discussing ways of uh, tips how to avoid for, in order to get the second date. But one of the ones that I really liked from yours was um, discussing road rage, which I thought was perfect. Okay, so the guy picks you up and two minutes in the car and he's swearing and screaming at the passenger or the car in front of him. That's going to make me, you know, want to reach for that door and jump out at the first possible sign. It's not light and sign. breezy. It's not light and breezy. <laughs> so keep it cool, people. You know, keep it cool and uh, keep yourself under control and laugh. Right? When all else fails, share a laugh because I think not only does laughter get the endorphins going, but it also puts everybody, I think, at ease. Yeah, definitely. I think mm -hmm. attitude is so important also. Absolutely. To go with a light and breezy attitude that's positive and just really attractive. Nobody wants to date a downer, right? Those I mean, are, those are classic words. Ah, uh, that's a quote, really. That's a true Nobody quote. Nobody wants to date a downer. I feel like I should tweet that out. <laughs> but point being, when you're out with somebody, let's say you go to a restaurant and she picked the restaurant. And you're there, let's say it was, you know, a Thai restaurant, and you find out at the, at the restaurant that he hates Thai food. Well, should he complain about every item on the menu, or should he just find something 
that he can enjoy in the moment and let it go. I would opt for letting it go. If you start complaining about every little thing, you start complaining about the waiter, if you start anything that brings the mood down, that's a deal breaker. Yeah. And that's just going to ruin the energy of the evening. And I really take note, especially if you do go on a dinner date or anywhere where there's people that are you know, helping you or assisting you in any way, I always pay attention to how the other person is treating those people that are in a service position because how they treat those people says a lot, I think, of how they view the rest of society. Right. Right? So if you have a guy at dinner and he's incredibly rude to the waiter or the waitress, that, that's that's a strike against him. And vice versa. It works both ways, of course. Right, right. You know? Oh. Yeah, it's just all about being a downer and yeah. being negative. But we have another call. Which is positive. Yes. <laughs> Hi, caller. How can we help you? Hey, I want to talk to um, the, the girls that are doing the webcast about first dates. That's us. You're talking to us. What's up? Oh, um, anyways, I'm 42 years old. I live in San Francisco. And... Um, I recently divorced and I have a child and I'm having a hard time, you know, I was married for 15 years and I'm having a hard time thinking of something, you know, I've been listening to you, but thinking of something that would be kind of original to do on a first day where maybe I can include my child. Do you guys have any ideas? Wow, that's mm. a great question. Thank you so much. Hmm. Well, personally, as a first date rule, I would not include the children I at say, all. I agree with you. No, that's that's just going to bring up a whole host of other questions and issues. Oh, let me just issues. stop in case they didn't hear. Oh. Um, the question was, this man has a child and wants to think of some creative ways to bring their child on a first date. But as you were saying. No, I, I just think that's a no-go. I would not I do agree. that. I, I think what ends up happening is, okay, you're bringing the child on the first date. Well, where do you go from there? And that's very awkward for the child because let's say the first date doesn't go well. So now you've introduced your child to a woman, or in this case a woman, because it was a male caller, who's never going to see this person again, what does that really do for the relationship between, you know, your child and people, right? right? You're setting that standard. I think it's really important before you ever introduce your children to a potential lover that you've been dating for at least six months to a year, and yeah. that you're exclusive and that you're very serious. We're talking marriage. Like, you're you're planning down the road. I, I agree. You yeah. can't keep it casual and bring the kids. That's not fair to the kids. Right. It's. Yeah, I, I think it sets a. It could set a bad dynamic both ways. It's. It's a lot of pressure and responsibility for the woman on the date mm -hmm. who now has this child to entertain. It's like first dates can be a little bit complicated to throw right. a child into the mix. It's complicated for the dynamics of the date. And also, and it's not a date. Right. It's, and, and once again, it kind of falls in the interview again, right? Because yeah, now it's like, does my kid like you? Do right, I? Oh, no. Right. Too and much. also for the child, I think it's it's um, not necessarily a good idea. I think it's only time to bring the child in to mm -hmm. meet someone new when you know that this new person is not just new, that they're going to be in your life for the future. But we Absolutely. Have caller. Hi, caller. How can we help you? Hi, is this Tracy Steinberg? This is Tracy Steinberg. <laughs> How can I help you? Uh, hey, Tracy, um, I watched your show before in the past, your dating show, Help, and I think it's a great show. Thank Aww. you so much. How can we yeah. help you? I'm calling in because I've been making several attempts before to try to look for a date. Um, I'm single. I've been single for my lifetime growing up. I'm 34 years old right now. Um, I'm really trying real hard to make some attempts to meet a girl. Um, I like to date an older girl if I could. You know, I'm 34 years old. Like I said, if the girl could be like 41 or something like that. Okay. That would be great, but again, I'm having a hard, hard time, tough time trying to get out there in the New York area, trying to look for a date, trying to meet somebody. Um, do you give classes? Is there any way that I can contact you for your classes? You said something about giving classes before, uh, helping out sure. a friend. Sure. And I just want to ask you, are these techniques effective? Do they really help people find dates and stuff like that? Yeah, definitely. So just in case you can hear him, he's 34 years old, and he is looking to meet a woman in his early 40s. I do remember you calling in the past. Thank you for calling before and for calling now. Yeah. Um, um, loyal they, following. Let, let me ask you, <laughs> it, it, do you feel like, the, where is the process breaking down? Is it that you're not seeing women that are attractive? Is it that you're not able to approach the woman? Is it that you're approaching but you're not getting the dates? Where is the process breaking down? Um, the process is that I'm really trying hard to find a girlfriend, you know, trying to get a date or something like that, meet people out there. So um, are you I'm meeting, women, I, are you meeting women, it's just not going to the dating place? Or is it... Like, where, where's the process breaking down? Is it is it that you're meeting women, asking them out on dates, and they're saying no? Or is it that you're going on dates and wanting to be 
wanting that to be your girlfriends and then that's not working out? Like, where's the process breaking down? Um, is that I can, I'm having a tough time trying to meet people and stuff like that. Trying to meet the girl is a tough time for me. Okay, so it, it sounds like the problem, it sounds like the, the process is breaking down really as far as you're seeing attractive women around New York City, but that you're not necessarily breaking the ice with them and actually going on dates and, is, well, is that correct? Well, the thing is that I would like to meet somebody, but, you know, I don't know how to approach them. You know, I don't know what could I do, what could I say to approach them. Okay, sounds like great. A, sounds and, like a confidence issue. You okay. know, um, I just want to know, like you say, that you teach people how to find dates. I want to know, do these techniques work 100%? You know, do they work, you know? I do, I do. You can go to my website, tracysteinberg.com. I oh. have uh, classes, and, and you can send me an email, and we can talk. But thank you so much for calling. Okay, so it sounds like you are having trouble approaching women. And this is, as you brought up perfectly, it is a confidence issue. Yes. The thing is that women like men who know what they want, and they want them. So if you see an attractive woman, the best thing to do is to just walk over to her and ask her a question about anything that's in the environment. Anything you see, hear, taste, touch, or smell in the environment, just break the ice, just ask the question, do it confidently. What you could do beforehand, um, just to make it more comfortable, is to try and catch her eye. I was just going to say that I think eye contact is really important. I think the female's job is to sort of give the signal, right? right. So we're going to make that eye contact back. We've decided, okay, I'm interested, you know, I'm giving you the flirty eye, right. but we don't want to approach you. Right. We right. want to be approached, right? right. So that, I think that's where a lot of times the breakdown with men happens. And, and rightfully so, I can understand that. It's like, okay, does she, is she really into me or is something in her eye? <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> does she really want me or am I just confused? So I think once you make that initial eye contact, approaching her is the hardest part. But like you always say, keep it light and breezy. Right. Even if it doesn't go well, don't take the rejection to heart. Right. It, it, you don't even know this person. It, she could have said no to you for a bajillion reasons, right? right. So you just you just move on. Right. But the important part is to take that step, you know, take a deep breath and just let it out and realize it's okay. I'm a person. He's a person. We're all people here. It's okay to approach somebody. Right. It's going to be all right. Exactly. And also, um, I, I love that you brought up the eye contact because I do mm -hmm. think it's a really good idea to get the, you know, you give out the eye signal, she gives you the eye signal, and then you just go walk over her and um, approach her and talk to her. Yes. Um, but Confidence you said something is key. Else, right. You said something else, and now we're getting a call, and I'm getting all confused. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I say just, just do it. You just have to do it. And the truth is that even if she doesn't respond to you, like you said, I mean, if you're it's not the end of the world. women that are 42 or whatever years old, she's been alive 42 years. So right. even if she doesn't respond to you. It may not be personal. In fact, it's probably not. It could be that she's married. It could be that she's gay. It could be that she's about to get evicted. It could be that she's thinking about her ex -husband. I would think there I would mean, be a lot of women in New York in yeah. that age range that would welcome yeah. that kind of... A younger man. Yeah, hello. 42-year-old woman Come on. like younger men. Mm. You're at an advantage. All right, let's see what the next caller wants. <laughs> ah! We missed him. That's okay. Call back. We didn't reject you on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't personal. It wasn't personal, I promise. Um, okay, so we talked about what to talk about. We talked about what to wear. We talked about where to go. We talked about um, the type of attitude to have. So yes. we're talking now about confidence. So yes. Tell me more about how important confidence is and other You just want to stay to engaged in the conversation, right? So can we just not focus on the phone? If the waiter or waitress is attractive, let's not flirt with them. Let's, <sighs> let's keep the eyes on the person that we're engaged with, right? Because it all comes down to, I think with my generation especially, we have so many options, it's almost too many options. So everybody's looking for the BBD, right? The bigger, better deal. But guess what? That doesn't exist. So enjoy and engage the one you're with and, and grow and nurture it and see what happens. Love the one you're with. Love the one you're with. I love the one I'm with. Oh. <laughs> Hi, caller. How can we help you? Um, Tracy, I'm um, the person who called a couple minutes back. Yes. I'm calling. I had another question I had to ask you also. Yes. Well, how can we help oh. you? Um, the next question again was that what's the best place to go in New York City to find, you know, meet women and stuff like that, to, you know, to meet somebody. I'm having a difficult time, but what's the best way to start to go to, you know, what place can I come to New York, you know? Okay. I had that, that's another question that came to mind to thought, you know, I just had to ask. So. So where to meet okay, women well, in New York? Thank you so much. So where to meet women in New York? Women are everywhere. Go to where the women are, right? Go to where the women are, totally. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to take that one? Oh, well, I just think, you know, women, where do we like to go? We like to go to nice lounges on the weekends, right? We like to go to the art openings. We like to do cultural events. So put yourself in those places. Some women really enjoy, if you're, if you're into sports as a male, 
go to places where you think women are going to be. So you may not want to hang out necessarily, you know, playing ultimate frisbee all afternoon with your other guy friends, just a thought, you know, so you want to put yourself in a position that you're going to meet women. So maybe a yoga class, for example, right. or a coffee house or a book reading or something unique and different and find something that you're interested in and then find out where do women go that are also interested in the same thing. For example, if you don't like yoga, don't inject yourself into that community because you're going to meet women that you're not going to have anything in common with, right? But if you enjoy, let's say, cooking, maybe take up a, a, a co-ed cooking class, you're bound to meet a few single women who enjoy cooking and may end up cooking you dinner right. or breakfast if you're lucky. <laughs> and wine tastings also. Oh, I mean, love the thing that. Is, there's, there's no shortage of single women in New York. Mm -hmm. You know, in my flirting parties, I really teach people to always be on and to be always, if you're looking to meet someone, that there are single people everywhere. Yes. So once you get some experience approaching people and just feel confident about approaching people and realize that it's not a big deal if the person doesn't respond you wipe it off your shoulder leave the cynicism at the door yeah you can't I, I say this in New York City leave the cynicism at the door <laughs> but it's the truth you know when it comes to dating you sometimes have to let take that leap of faith right so just go out there with a good heart and good intentions be genuine and who knows what will end up happening you may end up meeting somebody great do you talk a lot about this on todaymag.com I talk a lot about how to meet the perfect person and I think what when you say perfect I think it's so important that you are fulfilled within yourself which is why Today Mag has a plethora of articles about how to make yourself feel better as well as how to bring happiness to the people around you all right we have another caller yay hi caller how can we help you Hi, is this uh, Tracy Steinberg? This is, com? this is. How can I help you? Hi, I want to speak to two ladies on the phone. Yeah, That's here we us. are. How can we help you? You're on. You're live on the air. Oh, my God. <laughs> What's your question? Okay. So the, to, 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 to the person who just called and said um, how to meet people. Yes. I think that that the people who act, who actually go to the cultural places and the cultural clubs and the museums and Central Park and things like that are people you actually meet at work. That's interesting. The idea of maybe you know people meeting people at work, work especially. So it also depends on who who you meet at work. Also, mm -hmm. right. if you're um, if you work at a doctor's office or if you work at uh, a separate, on uh, uh, any any other company that you work for, right. these are the people. Right. These are the people that on Friday night they go and they get together with the, the girlfriends, yeah, and that's, they that's, go play pool and they go to swim. Um, I I agree with everything you're saying. Um, we're short on time, unfortunately, but I just want to repeat what she was saying, and that was that the people that you meet out are also the people at work, are also the people yes. taking the subway, are also the people walking down the street, are also the people... We're all the just cleaners. people. We're all just people. But Natalie, thank you so much. Oh, I love it. As always, you were amazing. For more of Natalie's thank you so much. amazing articles, todaymag.com. Yes. How, how do you spell today? Uh, T-W-O-D-A-Y-M-A-G.com. Okay, and I just want to also wrap up just quickly um, how important it is to keep the conversation light and breezy to... And put um, the cell phones away. Put the cell phones away. Put the cell phones away. Yes. And, um, it's important enough to say twice. Yes, and dress for the date. And uh, I am datologist Tracy Steinberg wishing you happy dating.